not trying to insult your law enforcement, sir. But this is my daughter, not yours. You telling me if it was your child missing, you could sit there and be calm and relax and hope that someone else might take care of it? It's obvious these guys are trouble. Trust us, we're gonna find your daughter. When? Once she's dead? Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. I am delighted to have you here to share an exciting time with me and my guest, who's an actor, producer, director, even a stuntman. And he's got well over 60 credits to his name with the films that he's either been involved with or been in. It's pretty exciting. You may already know him from uh, roles in American Assassin, Lethal Weapon, Criminal Minds. Um, he's had a very colorful palette of roles, everything from comic books to horrors. And there's something we're going to talk about today uh, regarding a new film that he has. I'll let him introduce it, even though um, if you've been watching on either my or his Facebook page, you may already know what it is. But um, he's even guest starred on Station 19 and more. He was a stuntman. We can let you hear a little bit more about that from him. And um, I've got to tell you, though, his career has been thriving. If you if you go to IMDb and you're checking him out, you're going to find a lot of really uh, surprises that maybe you didn't even know he was involved with. And, and they're really things that you will want to learn more about and and look for him in. He's described how putting your mind to something will really give you perseverance and you can achieve great things. He is one who has definitely shown that. And I want you to be a part of all of the things he's doing. He's very inspirational. When we finish, you're gonna get links to his, his pages and you wanna follow him because it's very exciting to see the things that he's doing. You can definitely reach your dreams and he's gonna share with us now what he's doing and it's going to help lead you to yours. Welcome to the show, Jeff Davis. Hey, Rebecca, thanks for having me. I am absolutely excited. It's been a little while since we've had an opportunity to chat and you've been doing some really great things. And so you have something coming out. I don't wanna to wait too long to share with the audience what it is, but um, if you go ahead and tell us about your your new your yeah. new role and what's coming um it's a it's a little film called outrage and it's a martial arts action film um directed by a, a young uh indian uh actor director who actually lives in houston uh sandeep jl is his name and sandeep okay. this is his first feature film and he wrote directed and stars in it and I star alongside him with a lot of uh, uh, local uh, Houston and that area, Texas actors. So um, it was it was a it was a good little project. We had fun. There's some I mean the martial arts scenes. The, the DP got right in there with the camera, and it was like Hong Kong style martial arts. So he was he was the fight scenes are amazing. There's some nice car chase scenes. It's got bikers. It's you know it's got it's got a little bit of everything. And, and I play character by the name of Mike, and I'm a good old, good old Texas boy. And uh, yeah, and uh, my daughter gets kidnapped. And I call in on the help of my friend, uh, Felix Chavez and Sandeep's character, which is Victor, to help me get my daughter back. So, this and we is... get her back. <laughs> what did you say? I said, and we get her back. Oh, you spilled. Okay, this is good though, but there's more in there. So do you do any stunts in there? Not in this movie, no. I, okay. I didn't. But I've done it. I, I started early in my career. I did some stunt work. Not a lot. But I mean, I, I grew up, I was a boxer when I was 15 years old. And I raced stock cars for when I was 18 to tw early, early 20s. Um, so I, you know, when I first got to Hollywood, I did a little bit of stunt work. I did some doubling. I did some on Waterworld for Kevin Costner. Uh, for Peter Green in a movie called uh, Rich Man's Wife with yes, Nellie Barry. Yes, say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But mostly, you know, I, I, I actually, when I was working on Waterworld, I was talking to Kevin's, his stunt double, and he, his name is, um, shoot, now I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, he, he told me, he said, Jeff, he said, you got to make a choice. You want to be an actor, you want to be a stuntman. He said early on in his career, he was actually in The Cowboys uh, with John Wayne. He was a 13, 15-year-old kid, whatever he was. 
And then he started doing stunt work and he said, I had to make a decision. He chose stunts and I chose acting. So. <laughs> well, that's interesting because oftentimes people that are coming into, you know, this field and this profession, they don't realize that you really need to get your niche out there and become really strong at something. And that's, what's going to take you where you need to go. And in, in any business, it helps to have a niche, I think. And, um, you know, stuntmen, you know, they work as stuntmen, you know, and, and actors work as, some do both. There's a lot of them that, but in order to be taken seriously as an actor, it's, it's better to focus on it. And, uh, that's what I chose. So. That makes a lot of sense. So now in your upcoming movie outrage, when is it scheduled for release? We're working on that right now. Um, I'm trying to work with the director, with Sandeep, to get it into some distributors' hands. Um, it, it, we might just, it might be released on Amazon within the next month or so. Um, we're working on it. So I will definitely let you know and let everyone know as soon as we, we get a release. I am excited about um, what you have coming out because this is going to be a biggie for a lot of, um, of those that were involved in the, the filming. And so... For it to go out on Amazon Prime, I'll definitely be there and sharing that too. But tell me a little bit about working in Texas, because normally you are on the other side of the, you're on the West Coast doing a lot yeah. of your work. I had never been to Texas. I mean, I did a movie just before that. I did a movie called Showdown on the Brazos with a director, actor by the name of Bill Foster up in um, the San, Anto San Antonio area. And um, I played a, a preacher and that was my first trip to Texas. And um, I worked on that movie, I don't know, I think I was there three or four days, and did all my scenes. What they did is they, because I was flying in from LA, they put all my scenes into a three day period, four day period, and we shot all my stuff, and then they've been months shooting all the rest of the movie. And that one hopefully is coming out uh, early next year as well, it's called Showdown on the Brazos. But while I was there, some of the actors that were there, um, Sandeep, the director of Outrage, came to meet me, and um, we made a deal at that point to come back in a, about a month later, and I worked on his movie. So it was, uh, it, it was great. I loved Houston. I mean, the, the people there were great, uh, dedicated talent pool there, and uh, you know, people just want to be involved, and it was, uh, it was refreshing. A little different than L.A. It is a little bit different, but it's, it's pretty hot going on here. And I don't mean just the heat as far as weather goes, but it's hot with uh, filming and um, a whole a whole host of things for the industry, the entertainment industry going on now in Texas. But I've got to tell you, Bill Foster is absolutely phenomenal. And what's really exciting about uh, your role as preacher in Showdown of the Brazos is that on the film circuits, it just won tons of awards. Um, yes. Well, I, I think as a script. I don't know if the, if the film itself has yet, but I know the script has won. I'm not sure about okay. Yeah, sure I have been, I've just been seeing that come up over and over again, and I thought, wow, this is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's it, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a fun character for me, uh, something completely different. And my first Western, I love Westerns, so it was the first chance I had to actually work on a, on a Western. So, but I've got more in the works than that, too. I've got a couple of my own in the works, so, and I've already been. Well, we definitely want to hear more about that when you are ready to share. I do want to know, though, if, there's going to be a red carpet event for either uh, Showdown or um, Outrage. And if you, if there is, or a premiere, are you coming? Um, if it's once this whole COVID system out of the system, if they do something, I'll come. Right now, I'm not traveling out of the state, uh, staying close to home. Um, plus, if, if I leave it, then I got to come back. It's hard to get back into work here, too, because they make you uh, quarantine once you come back. So it's better to stay local. Uh, now the production has picked up a little bit. The auditions are coming in, so I got to be here. But uh, if either one of them has a premiere, I'll do my best to get there. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to go see it with the with all the crew and cast and and the people that come to watch it. So definitely. Yes, yes. So I'm really excited. Tell us some of the things that you found um, that launched you into just having such a successful career so that we can share with the audience some motivation and some inspiration for them to achieve what they're shooting uh, out to do as well. The, the, I just, you know, I woke up one day and said, I'm going to be an actor and I sold everything and flew to LA. Um, I just had decided, I, I, I worked on a, um, I did one play. Uh, I did a little class. I had never really done any acting. I was in my mid twenties 
And this girl that was in the played in the class with me, I, I ended up seeing her on TV. She had gone to New York and, and got on a soap opera. And, you know, I was at a point in my life where I owned my own business. I had a fitness store. I sold all the stuff and um, everything was good, but something was missing. And when I saw her on TV, I said, that's what I want to do. And so I flew to LA, not really knowing, I, mean, I had done nothing basically. I had no background, no, no training. Um, I just dove into it and just started doing it. I think for anyone starting out, um, the main thing is to know that it's a long journey. You can't just, you know, you got to be in it for the long haul. I mean, don't say, oh, I'm going to go to LA for five years. And if I don't make it, I'm done. Because if you, not many people make it in five years. And there are the, there's the lucky people that hit something big early on. But usually when they do, then they don't know how to get work. So once that show has gone, they're gone. So um, it's, it's, it's patience. Uh, it, it, you just got to, and, and work. It's hard, hard, hard work. You just got to, every day be working on your craft. I love it. I love it. Do you think looking back on your career that you'd end up where you are now? Um, I thought I'd be a lot further ahead by now. <laughs> uh, um, you know what? That's good. That, it's good that you say that though. And let me tell you why, because we always want to continue to reach for yeah. growing and achieving more. So I kind of like that you said that. Well, I just, I, I, about three years after getting to LA, um, I got married to my lovely wife, and we've been married for 25 years last week. And, oh, congratulations! Uh, and we had a son, and then two years later, I had my other son. So I think being a dad came first, and a husband. So it slowed things down a little bit. I had to have money coming in, so it changed my trajectory a bit. And I always you know, the funny thing is, is I, back in I think it was 2014, my my youngest got his driver's license. Uh oh. And <laughs> I started, but once that happened, it freed me up from dropping them off at sports and school. And my career just, and if you look at my, look at IMDb, you'll see from 2013, 2014 on, um, every year's been better than it was the previous, you know, 20 years. So it, uh, it, it just freed me up and, and that's, you know, but I, I'm glad that I went that route. Um, wouldn't trade any of it. It's been great. But uh, now I'm just concentrating more on my, on my career. I absolutely love it. So with the whole issue of COVID, how challenging is that not only for someone who's looking to get into the industry, but for those who are experienced and that generally can pick up some work? Yeah, well, right now there's, I mean, shows are starting to shoot again, um, but everything is auditioning at home, kind of like we're doing right here. I mean, we have to shoot our own auditions, put in the computer, edit it, and download it to a site somewhere or, and um, so it's tough. I mean, you don't get any, like a lot of times when you're going to read for a big, you know, recurring guest star on a TV show, you're in a room full of, you know, there's the director and the writer and a couple producers. So you get some feedback. Uh, now everything is, you talk into a camera and you put it on tape and you send it in. So you just, you know, you hope for the best, but um, for someone just starting out now, it's a tough, I mean, it, I mean, I suppose, it, it, there's just not as much going on right now. And when you do there, the COVID protocols, which, which are great, you know, they make sense, but people are testing every day and you get to get tested, I think a week before you can even shoot. And I mean, it's, 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 it's tough. And it's, I think because of that lower budget stuff can't afford to do all that right now. So it's, it's definitely slowed down a lot of the smaller productions. Oh, you know, that makes sense. And especially when you think about the smaller productions and the, amount that's already involved and to add that it really can um wipe it out in for a while i mean at least until yeah, they, you, budget know. Movies, you know 100 200,000 dollar movies 300,000 that you could probably add easily 25 to 30,000 on top of that you know and they've already budgeted they've already gone out and got their financing so now you've got to go back and find another 25 30,000 to do all the testing and the protocol and that so it's it it either puts people on a shelf and they're going to wait, like, you know, put the projects on the side for now, or they've got to go back out and find some more money, which is not easy. No, it isn't. I know quite a few people that have been looking for investors over the, over the course of the last few years, but especially over the last, I don't know, um, six to eight months. And I will tell you, I mean, it's just been a real interesting journey for them along with turn of events as 
different parts of this cycle have uh, went on. And so you've got people that they'll feel secure and they're getting ready to move back in the game. And if there's any type of a spike, they're, you know, pulling back and feeling not sure about the direction of the way things are going to go. And this has been a real interesting challenge on a lot of levels, not just the entertainment industry. You've got brick and mortar that are, they were already kind of going, going kind of under the competition because everything's been online, but now right. it's a really big challenge. So it um, that's, it's just really interesting that you share too, that a lot of auditions are done at home and off of, um, some type of a medium like this. And if you're not experienced or comfortable on camera, that could be, that could be very time consuming to try and understand how it all works and what you want to project to a casting agent or um, someone who's reviewing things to get it there. So this is pretty interesting. How, how much time do you have to put into that? And do you have to change up your reel every time? Um, no, no, it's, they're giving you scenes to do. I mean, it, when, you, when you're auditioning for a show, a movie or a TV show, they send you the sides and you get it. I mean, some of them, it's like, you know, can you get this in by, you know, tomorrow, 10 a.m. So it's like, you know, you're busting. Other times you've got three or four days to, to take your time and, and work on it. But the sooner you get in, the better, because you want to get it, you make sure you, there's no snags. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's nothing, to, you know, your reel is completely separate. This is, this is just, you know, you put down a piece of tape putting out a character that they've asked you to put down on tape. And then you go to the computer and you, you have to put together your, your slate and then the scene and this maybe another scene. Sometimes it's two or three scenes, depending on how big the part is. And, you know, last night, for example, I, I had um, uh, two different things for Toyota that I had to put on tape. And one of them had two characters, so I had to do both characters. And so I did that. And then I had a TV show that I had two characters that they wanted to see me read for. So I did those, put them into my computer, downloaded them, edited them, got them out. And then I sat down to relax. I'm going to watch a little football and I get another text uh, for auditions. I set That's everything awesome. up and turn the computer back on and, and get that one out. So, I mean, it's, you know, those are great days. Though. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I might go five to 10 days without any. And so then you get one day like that where everything comes at once. So, well, you know, we'll take the good with the bad, but it's just, it can be tiring. It's, it's different. I can understand how that can be tiring. And I mean, you've got to be on the go and then you're patiently waiting or desperately waiting or <laughs> anticipating, hopeful, you know, just so many different emotions go through that. And so you get this little roller coaster going, but I've got to ask you too. I mean, you've had over 60 credits. And so with everything that you've done and you don't have to share this, but um, I'm wondering what would be the favorite typecast of a role that you get? Oh, I don't think I've been typecast yet. <laughs> um, <it's what> <laughs> That's good. I, yeah, I haven't played the character that I really want to play yet. Um, I mean, I've played some characters that I enjoyed playing. Um, I think Mike, the character I just played in Outrage, actually was uh, a little bit closer to what I want to play. Okay. Um, I think something like the lead character of Longmire, um, you know, that kind of a Western, modern day Western, or even maybe, a, you know, a Matt Dillon and Gunsmoke type character. Um, I just, that's kind of where I want to go. Or um, I've got another project that I've been working on with with uh, someone that they're hoping, they're trying to get out, but they've attached me to it. It's uh, like a head of the FBI invest, you know, investigator, which is a great character. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, you know, I, that's what's tough. I mean, I, and I, lucky, you know, I, don't get me wrong with this. I mean, I've been, I've been afforded a lot of different characters. I haven't been, I don't have a certain look that just falls into a category, which is good and bad. I mean, when you're starting out, if you look like a cop or if you look like this, that, then you get a lot of those roles, you know, smaller ones that you don't need to be a great actor, but you look like a certain thing. I never had a certain look. I kind of look like everybody and anybody, which is good because now I get, I mean, I, if you look at my reel and you look at the characters I've played, you know, it's everything from an escaped convict, you know, to an FBI agent and a lot of cops and a lot of military, uh, the Westerns, you know, the preacher. The, so, I, I mean, it, it's good and bad. But uh, I, I think in the long run, you know, I still haven't got the character that I really want to play. 
Okay, but you know, I've got to tell you, and I want to share with the audience to definitely have them check you out on your Facebook fan page because you really engage all of us with the things that you're doing to practice different possible auditions coming up or roles that you'd like, different accents. And it's really very, um, it's not only entertaining, but it's really neat to watch the journey of your growth this way, because some of us would never try something and then share it with everybody. And I think that this is fantastic and you're getting a lot of really good feedback. Yeah. I, 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 I you know, good following. I, I'm, I'm happy for that. Um, yeah, I like to play around with, with accents. Uh, and I don't, I never really learned them. They just kind of come to me. I mean, some days I'll just be sitting there and you know, I, I might see someone on TV and kind of pick up their accent or I'll talk to someone on the phone and pick up their accent. Uh, and like, I, I don't know if you know Nick Faraday, the golf ex golfer. He's a real funny guy. Uh, Nick Faraday, Nick Faraday, he's, he's, he's an Irishman. I love to you know, listen to him talk and I love to talk like him if I can, you know, and uh, <laughs> like that, you know, if I talk to someone who's from the South, you know, I start talking to the Southern accent and I'm from New England. I'm from Maine. So, Yes, that one comes off from natural to me. So, you know, you just kind of drop the eyes and, you know, you go right into that one. So but that's, that's, yeah, that's what keeps me going. I mean, I haven't had a chance to do a lot of that other than the Southern I get to do. And, you know, if you watch my Lethal Weapon episode, I was a, a guy from Texas. Uh, Outrage is a Texas kind of girl. So, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's exciting. And it's, I, I do a lot of it. I put it on Instagram to try to, to engage people and, and uh, you know, let them see what, what goes on. I love it. I love it. I just want to share with the audience any type of social media you'd like them to connect with you. So if you'll give that out to them I mean, now, that would be great. Any social media out there, I'm JF Davis actor. I use the same handle across the board. That way it makes it easier. And my, even my website is jfdavisactor.com. So, um, yeah, you can find me, you know, uh, across the board. I love it. I want to thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited about the upcoming outrage film that you have along with some other things that you might be releasing to us, hopefully shortly. I'd like to hear more about it. And hopefully once COVID's over, I can start shooting some of my own stuff. I got a few things in the works. So we'll see. Well, I, I'm really, I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed with what you've got going and I can't wait to see a whole lot more, especially once this, this kind of tapers off and gets out of it, <laughs> gets out of here for, for us to be able to get back to some, some normalcy, but, um, You're normal. <laughs> thank you so much, Jeff. I'm, I'm really delighted. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Make sure that you catch up with uh, Jeff on all of his social media because you're going to learn a lot. You're going to be engaged. He's so positive and it's going to give you a lot of in inspiration for the things that you do as well. Make sure you click on the description box on all of the different outlets for this. You can find out more about stuff that was going on here in this episode that might be really applicable to you along with all the links to catch Jeff if you didn't catch it just a second ago. Thanks for tuning in. Oh.